Roberto Saviano, thank you for coming. Uh, ten years ago, you did what really nobody else had been brave enough to do. You wrote a book that exposed the brutality of the organized criminal networks in Italy. You exposed and named mafia bosses. Most Italians, may, maybe most Italians, describe you as a hero. Certainly Italian friends of mine say you're a hero to them, and yet it's ruined your life. The Mafia have put a price tag on your head, they want you dead, and essentially you're now in hiding, aren't you? After I wrote my book, the Italian state put me under police protection. Currently I live with bodyguards, and this year will be the tenth year I have been under protection. I was 26 when it began. I didn't believe I would end up like this. I am aware that I am not brave when I say if I went back in time, I would act more cautiously. I mean, what you're describing in terms of your own personal life in the last 10 years would to most people be pretty horrific. You have bodyguards, you say? I mean, how big a team? It depends on the occasion. At the moment, whenever I am outside in public, I have seven bodyguards and two bulletproof cars. Otherwise, five bodyguards and two cars. It depends on the country hosting me, though there are few countries that have decided not to let me in. It might seem absurd, but this is a very common for people who speak out on these subjects. At the moment, in Europe and South America, there are many writers who are in the same situation. I found myself in this situation because I didn't hide my face. I used my real name in my books. I never wanted to hide my identity when I own TV. It's fundamentally important that I put myself out there, my face, my eyes, my name, my blood and my body. You have bodyguards then. Are you able to live in a normal house? If I mean, presumably over some of the 10 years, you, you've not been out in Italian society, if you like. Bodyguards are given to people like myself, journalists, writers. To be able to say this death threat will not stop you. For example, when I go to a venue and give a talk, I will be surrounded by police. Sometimes I can go to a restaurant, but I will be surrounded by police protection, sometimes with dogs. There is a part of me that longs for revenge against the people who have done this to me. I don't want to give my life over to them. They have had 10 years of my life. It's inconceivable that I give it away to them. All this came about because you pointed the finger directly at the criminal bosses, the mafia bosses. I mean, perhaps we in, in Britain, in America and places, we have a romanticized image of the mafia from the movies and, and, and the books we read. And yet you're saying, I mean, is the Mafia, does it really have its finger on top of Italy? It controls Italy in the, in the violent way that you suggest. Is that still the case? The Mafia has a big control over the Italian and European economies, and also some military control in certain areas. A small segment of their activity is illegal and a large segment is legal. The illegal segment mainly comprises cocaine, marijuana and hash trafficking. Their legal operations, on the other hand, mainly focus on waste management, including toxic waste. And there is a lot of funding placed into construction, food distribution, shops, restaurants, large shopping centers and financial investment. The best way to understand mafia organizations is to think of them as businesses, which not only use their wealth, lobbying and marketing when they do business, but also rifles, bombs, murders, torture, 
and their own rules. The mafia has special rules, and they clearly state that they are men of honor. That's how they define themselves. And men of honor listen to and obey the rules. Lesser men obey the law. A few years ago, I spent some time in Mexico covering the drug wars and the drugs trade in Mexico. I was struck by something that you're quoted as saying. You said, if Mexico is the heart of the drugs war, then London, the city we're sitting in, is its head, the head of the drugs war. What, what did you mean by that? A university study has demonstrated that over 90% of money made through drug trafficking is laundered in the US and Europe. In Europe, this mainly happens in London. Without London, Mexican cartels money, for example, it would just stay in Mexico. But thanks to the offshore financial system that Britain allows, cash gets straight into Europe through the front door, which is England. The British public think they are detached from the mafia problem. But if you see the way in which money is moved around, you can see that London is actually very close to Mexico City and Naples. It's obvious you're passionate about this subject, about corruption, but what about the psychological impact on you of the last 10 years? You must be scared. You must fear for your life. I'm scared. I'll never escape the situation. It's difficult for British people to understand because the threats on my life were not by phone or letter. But they put, as I understand it, a leaflet through your mother's door with a picture of your face on it, a gun to your head, a picture of this, and the word condemned written across <laughs> the top. I mean, the impact, well, you're laughing, but the impact on your mother, on your family, on you, surely that's huge. This sort of threat I'm used to. The impact on my family, on my mother. I'm not sure how best to say this. I feel very guilty. I am suffering the threats, but I am also continuing to work. At the moment, I'm here with you, speaking out but my family are not. They are in hiding. I will never forgive myself for what I have done to my family. They have lost their happiness, their quality of life. The only way of getting out of this is to be conscious of what we are trying to do. I know that what I'm doing has a purpose. Everything else is secondary. Well, for what it's worth, I think you're incredibly brave. Roberto, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.